Um, and Brissa, when I know we've spoken about the condition score before, you know, it's it's such a tricky thing. And mm. I, I think the answer is for people to move away from what their eye is telling them and to kind of get that independence. The best way, I suppose, is just to take a horses on the first of every month or something is to do your, which we did share in the last podcast, yeah, to do weight. your weight. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So do that. And also, look, you know, sometimes I actually more and more, I mean, I'm looking at the pictures. I talk to the grooms and, and people. Why does your saddle suddenly not fit? Mm. Most often it's because your fat pads have moved or changed. Okay. And the fat pad just behind the shoulder is probably the most easy one to monitor because it affects the saddle fit. Okay. And I mean, I know in Europe they recommend and in England that you really should have your saddle fitted every Three months, so three months four times a year, yeah. every time the season changes. Yeah, that, and that's, that's because it's the seasonal change, mm. because our grass has changed. So this year, I've had the highest incidence of insulin resistance and ACTH increase, which is your cushionoid horses, in autumn. Really? So just that's... recently, I've done all the testing, because that's when we're supposed to. So what happens is just before winter comes along, the grass goes, oh, I better start storing some sugar because it's about to be winter. So they over make manufacture the yeah. sugar you have a high sugar content in the grass and it just pushes those horses into laminitis so i had a massive number this year and i've had actually from around the country results coming in from other people that i assist with nutrition so autumn autumn, autumn is, is when you should really when time. you should be taking bloods and checking your horse that's and I would recommend that if you have a horse that has that tendency or you've got a genetic horse that's been a show horse because most of our show ponies have been mm. selected for that, that you get the bloods run in autumn. And, and it's an ACTH yeah. and the glucose insulin. So you're testing for, for Cushing's as well as insulin okay. resistance. It's not just one or the other anymore. We look at all of them. I was very interested to to see, and I mean, we've all soaked grass at some point, mm -hmm. but um, for a, cush a, a friend of a client's cushion, Cushing's horse, they're soaking the grass to get those sugars, sugars out. out. And I, I was amazed. How long should you be? Because I mean, like, I think I've seen people dunking it. Okay, so dunking just takes the, yeah, the dust, off. dust off. So you need to soak it for at least 20 minutes in hot water. Mm -hmm. But hot is the important part. And I say to people, leave it in for an hour or so because I know it's a management problem. I mean, when the water comes out, it's you must see what it looks like. brown with yeah. the sugar and it smells and sugar. so sweet. Mm. That's incredible. So that's how you get rid of those sugars. So okay. that's a really nice way. So I would rather you did that with, and use TEF okay. for the digestibility than go over to Erogrostis because you're going to take yourself into all the problems with the colics. So mm. stick with the TEF, okay. but soak it and get the sugar out. I even get people to soak the OTE. If that's the only thing they have and they can use it in the cape, and we soak the ote. Okay. And 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 it works. Because you still want them to have access. You also don't want to cut the grass. No. You know, and you it, want them it's to all have the access. other problems. You know, if you don't eat, then you start getting ulcers and there's anxiety and all those things that start <laughs> building into it. It's a cascade it's with a, horses. A complicated <laughs> species. <laughs> Aren't they just? 